Hi, Scott Bruder here. So, the problem I have today is this Easy Flash Omega. It recently started having a little bit of a problem where the time would stay, but it would only count up when the unit was on. And I said, hmm, this is interesting. Took it out to Reddit forums and things like that. And someone said, it's probably the battery. That was about three weeks ago. So what I did was I hunted down the type of battery that was needed and ordered a bunch and then waited. Now time has passed and we can take a look here at the cartridge and see, let's wait for it to load, that the clock doesn't work at all. So it was the battery. It had a bit of a voltage, just enough to hold it, but not enough to actually do anything with it. So what we're going to do today is we're going to check the voltage on it and replace the battery. So first and foremost, let's get out our uh, little screwdriver, take this apart. screw aside as well and let's take a look here we'll zoom in on this one and we have a tabbed battery here take a look at the voltage so the positive is on the right the negative is on the left, and we have less than a volt. So this here is, uh, has died quite quickly. That's not good. Uh, I'll zoom back. Look at my desk. Less than a volt. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel that off. So move that aside, get some no clean flux, one, two, get my soldering iron out, and There we go. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my package that came from China. Take out a battery. Sheesh, that looks pretty familiar. With one exception, if we look here, the downside of the tabs are on the positive side, as opposed to this one, the downside of the tabs are on the negative side. That's not great. Let's uh, take another one in here and take a look. So it's the same thing. Positive tabs are on the top. Let's see what you get. So there's the positive side of the battery. I don't know why this focus isn't any good. And there's the tabs. Okay, so let's do a quick fix. The quick fix for this is I'm gonna get a little flathead screwdriver. We're just gonna bend those tabs. There's a little flathead. And I'll take that tab and bend it out flat. And I'll take this tab and bend it down, and give it a little bit of a notch. And then what we'll do is we'll trim it. Not too shabby. So to make sure that the clarity is right and everything's just not out to lunch, 
I'm going to use my multimeter. And we'll go positive and negative. Still the low point, 1.9 volts. And then we're going to go positive and negative. And this is 3 volts. Not bad at all. So next step is I'm going to tin the leads on this battery. Done, I'll flip it over. Perfect. So there's a lot, a lot happening here with extra solder. So I'm just gonna clean the extra solder off my tip and just see if I can take some of this off. Maybe I have a little bit of solder wick I can use. It'll help it a bit. Okay, so we got that, we got that. Now the one item that I did see is this old battery has a little foam tab on the back. So I'm going to just steal that. And that piece of foam will act to insulate from a short on the board. And then I'm going to sit that like that. And let's see. We're going to go and put those tabs into position. Two for a nice good solder joint. Oh, the other one is a little further off. Keep that up and bend it. Look at that, that one's good. I'm just going to flex the battery over. Make sure that I don't create a short on the battery terminals. That's a big no-no. I don't think I've gotten any any short there. Looks pretty close, but I think we're safe. Let's just test across those two terminals. Positive, positive, negative, negative. Three volts. Done. I'm just going to take that little flathead screwdriver I used before. I'm just going to add a little bit more flex to that bottom terminal to keep it up and away from the positive terminal looks pretty good I'll do it again here done I think we're good perfect no short potential We'll check for voltage again, make sure she's looking good. Hmm. 2.8 volts, not bad. Looks good, no shorts. So last thing to do here is to kind of clean that off. I recommend isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip. Sometimes you can do it with a little brush. Now 
Now this is no clean flux, but you know what? I don't care. Always be cleaning. A clean contact is a good contact. And while I'm at it, I'm going to use the side that doesn't have any resin on it and just clean the contacts. Clean the board. I think we're good. Take it, put it back in the body the right way. Top back on. Click, click. Screw back in place. Okay, so because we've removed the battery out of this, I feel like we're going to have a fun situation where the clock will be dead. But that's okay. What we'll do is we'll just quickly set it. Oh, seven seconds. Oof. Nine seconds. Okay, we'll toggle over. We'll go to set. And I'm just going to set it to, what's the time right now? I don't even know. Let's say it's uh, 6.30 p.m. I feel like 30 was a long drive for a visit. So I'm going to set, OK, toggle over through the menus, make sure that 6.30 stays there, 6.30, 6.30. Turn off the unit, take out the card, shake it around a bit. The shake it around is not important. And we'll turn it back on. With any luck, we'll see 6.30 on the screen. 6.30, come on, 6.30, 6.30, look at that, we are good, so sure enough, these batteries do fail, and it's good to have extra ones around, so that when you replace them, you're prepared, and of course, always remember, check your polarity before, after, during, because the last thing you want to do is have the polarity reversed and damage the equipment. If you have any questions or comments, please put them below. Have yourselves a great day, and thank you for watching.